With Metro Exodus, developer 4A Games had the unenviable task of building upon a masterpiece. Too punishing to break into the mainstream, yet too bold to fade into irrelevance, the Metro series is a sort of counterculture within the FPS genre. While most shooters strive for thrills, momentum, and that ever-elusive flow state, Metro relies on slower pacing and painstaking attention to detail. The series' second entry, Last Light, was the peak of this philosophy, and in my opinion, one of the finest shooters to date. That's why the franchise's newest installment is so fascinating. Metro Exodus is the work of a studio that already mastered its craft six years ago. But instead of chasing Last Light's brilliance, 4A decided to further toy with genre conventions. Exodus is the work of a developer that now, more than ever, is comfortable breaking the rules. If you played Exodus, then you know it's a series of survival sandboxes bookended by more traditional, linear shooter levels. You'll fight your way through a subterranean hideout before emerging into a massive desert where you can spend hours scavenging for supplies. Exodus's predecessors had glimpses of this general shape. In fact, some of Last Light's better sections were these mini sandboxes that gave you the freedom to approach from numerous angles, oftentimes with subtle, stealthy methods. They elevated the pacing to the flawless pitch that it was, supplementing tight corridors with spacious playgrounds. Last Light was brilliant in the way it seamlessly blended these two formats, but Exodus is intriguing for kind of exactly the opposite. It's less about how these structures can flow into one another than how they can play off of one another, like two jazz musicians taking turns with their solos. Take Exodus's first open area, the Volga. It's a radioactive, waterlogged wasteland along Europe's longest river. It's littered with hostile mutants and electrical pulse phantoms. It is as inviting as the rest of the series, which is to say, not at all. Your map is free of quest indicators until you train your binoculars on distant landmarks or gather intel from your Spartan teammates. The only methods of travel are in a rowboat or on foot, both of which pose their own dangers. Despite its general openness, however, there are discrete linear missions within the Volga. When you first come across a cult of zealous technophobes, you find yourself trapped in their headquarters. It's a maze of dark corners and interlocking catwalks, and fighting, or sneaking, your way out becomes a self-contained level of its own. Once you're out, you're back in the Volga's open expanse. Suddenly, you're thinking differently again. The Volga is about big picture problems. Are there likely to be mutants in that valley ahead? Do I have the right weapons for this trek across the map? Will these three oxygen canisters suffice until the next workbench? The cult's hideout, however, was more about immediate concerns. Extinguishing the lights, making it to that door, landing this kill with my throwing knife. Looking back, that's where much of my enjoyment of Exodus stems from. How well each sandbox, each linear mission, requires a different school of thought. It's also remarkable how well 4A builds expectations with each area, only to question them with the next. The Volga is clever in how its watery passageways funnel you from one mission to the next. But the Caspian Desert thrusts you into a more traditional open world. You come across quests organically, by speaking with fellow travelers or listening to the local radio station. It's almost as if Exodus is critiquing itself as it goes. Claustrophobic shootouts can grow stale, so 4A sweeps them aside for sandbox stealth. Freeform exploration can be boring, so 4A brings you back underground where monsters wait in the dark. It's more than just expert pacing, it's a constant willingness to question what came before, and it carries you along for the ride. To be clear, Exodus does stumble along the way. It has an array of technical problems and certain missions that overstay their welcome. It's also too on the nose with some of its story elements and relies a bit too heavily on exposition for my taste. But by the time you reach the Taiga, Metro Exodus's final open area, 4A has you exactly where it wants you. It's the most confined sandbox yet, with narrow forest paths and dilapidated cabins. It's less about exploring your surroundings than it is about learning how to use them to your advantage. For reasons I won't spoil here, it tests everything you've learned about the game's survival systems thus far, and also asks you how much of a pacifist you're willing to be in such a harsh world. Had 4A saved its most traditional open world for last, it probably would have stumbled. By letting you slowly explore at such a late stage in the story, it might have wrecked the pacing of the final hours. Instead, it blends its traditional linearity with occasional bouts of exploration. 
He reminds you of where the series came from without sacrificing where it is right now. It builds momentum as the game hurdles towards its conclusion, and here, in its final moments, 4A is at its peak. I find it fitting that Metro evolved by leaving the tunnels its identity was built on. To use an appropriate metaphor, Exodus is less about the linearity of train tracks and more about the possibility of careening off them at a moment's notice. All of this combines to give me the impression that 4A loves what it does. It loves shooters, it loves taking risks with level design, it loves dangerous worlds with brief shimmers of humanity, and in Exodus, these things are all subject to scrutiny. Having finished Metro Exodus, I can't help but reflect on how far the franchise has come. 4A has never been shy about its inspirations. It has cited Half-Life 2 as one of its guiding predecessors, with story-driven combat and a willingness to bend the rules. But while Metro 2033 and Last Light were chasing Valve's seminal shooter, Exodus has an identity altogether its own. It feels like the work of a developer who has adored, studied, and mastered a genre and is now comfortable with experimentation. It doesn't always work, but it's fascinating to see unfold. <laughs>